Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we go to bed, or potentially thrash the room. Last episode we read a case, and the time didn't advance, which means that maybe something happened. I don't, I don't know. Let's not advance uh, the time. Let's pretend that it did advance by half an hour, and see what happens when we go to bed looking sad, and uh, still having this thing to interact with. We're gonna do it tomorrow morning. The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. Let's go to sleep. The bed is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window. The mattress creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. <laughs> Here we are again, my broken bard. The waves are coming. Carrying you away, but you can't go. No, you have to stay always half aware of yourself. You're not cooperating, brother man. Why? It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep, you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety. But you cannot because of the pain. And there's a lot of it, ever present in your organs. It's like every one of them has their own nasty song to sing. That pain in your right side is your enlarged liver, by the way. As for your kidneys, you've really been compounding the damage lately. I'm an artist, and liver damage is my art. Oh yeah, baby. Frame your suffering as a masterpiece. Only one problem. No one's watching. It's boring, buddy. Boring as death. You're just stuck here, in the half-world. Could try looking at other people, really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? Human beings will always betray you. How many promises have you kept lately, Sir Harry? To the great see-through world. The tenderness. Thou art honorable and just, sire. Tis the snakes who are vile, hissing in the grass. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness? Look at all these lights, blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts! You're just pretending that you're asleep, even to yourself, while the world goes on without you. Let it. Let it. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. I'm going to open my eyes. Health has been healed. My morale as well. I think I think it was already healed. I must have said some moralist things to the mirror. And here we are. 7.30. Ready to rumble. The fan stands still. Let's pull on the fan. And I believe it's turned it on. The switch must be broken. Because nothing happens. The air in the room is starting to feel like vaporized urine. Hmm. I don't think there's anything I can do in the mirror. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Yep. Is Kim waiting for me outside? Maybe downstairs. Kim. Kim? 
Can't, can't open the door. Off we go. We have detecting to do. Good morning, says Kim. Hey, Kim. Yes? I found out what the pail is while you were gone. Wonderful. He does not seem surprised. What is your takeaway? I... Wait, you're not surprised? I can't stop a grown man from learning about the fundamental geographic and anthropogenetic features of our world, can I? I think it's terrifying. Then I was right to spare you from it, no? He cracks a little smile. Anyway, the pale is no more terrifying than, say, water or death, or that we are stuck behind our eyes for all eternity. He looks around, pensive suddenly. Excuse me, large topics are not my forte. You seem stable enough. Keep it that way. Now, was there anything else, or should we get to it? No, I, it's, go it's good. I'll see you later. Gacht, I haven't thrashed my room yet. Can I help you? He arches an eyebrow. I can pay the bill, but I'm not gonna. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. She sounds glad to see you. I could convince her to tell me some cool about some cool cryptids. That's for suggestion. I don't know how difficult it is. It doesn't say over here. It doesn't say how difficult. Maybe it does in the map. Who are these cops, though? Look. You see those rectangles? That's literally their symbol. It's just a, a, a rectangle in their back. On their back, I suppose. The woman in an RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Hold on, you're a patrol officer of the RCM? Yes. She nods. I am. Yeah, I'm a cop too. I know. Here's the real deal. Horse-faced woman is her name. The narrator didn't tell us about her horse face. Uh, that might have been why there was a line about her being in the cavalry. Because, uh, if you don't know, uh, it, the cavalry means the, ho the, the thing of the horses. Cavalry, basically, you know, it's, it comes from cavalieri. And it, cavalieri means a horseman or a horsewoman, because... Because it's the, it works the same. Actually, it's plural, so it would be horse men and horse women, or horse people, I suppose. But the horse people has a different. It's whatever. Either way, it's it's knights. It's knights. That that's the knights. That's where it comes from. Is everything all right? You, why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. She's still avoiding your gaze. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? Have I wronged you? I, I've done that to a lot of people. No, you haven't wronged me. It's okay. She shakes her head and breathes out. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Uh, okay, well, I... You're the police, right? Cool, so am I. I don't... She looks around. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Judith. Man with sunglasses. What are you, the police, doing here? I'm just looking out for... No one. The man looks at her. I'm just a man with sunglasses, and you are... A horse-faced woman. You're a fucking asshole. She says this with quiet dignity. Are we done here? So, what precinct are you from? What precinct? <sighs> she just sighs. Fucking deranged lunatic. The glass-wearing man pushes through his teeth. Okay, goodbye. You look like shit. Your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. You look like shit, asshole. Wow, you seem stable and in control. Allow me to say, alcohol really seems to have had a positive effect on you. Now, what do you want? His tone is impatient. Okay, so this guy is cool. He stands there like a statue, an angry statue. And he does not like you. 
There's something strange about this guy. I'm gonna figure it out. But I need my esprit de corps. I think I have a bunch of it already, because at least my... That. Um... Okay, see you around. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice. So very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? I think I did. Wait, your voice, I recognize it. Oh, really? I wonder where. I lost my badge recently when I called in to report it missing. You were there. That's the where you remember me from? I... Yes. N maybe. Okay, then. It's probably a coincidence. People sound alike. Goodbye. Can I talk to him again about that? I just wanted to be ready with my shirt. You know. It's pretty decor. Ah, dang it. That was my best choice. Again? I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head, looking like he really is having trouble believing this shit. He might be wearing a disguise. There's something strange about this guy. I'm gonna figure it out. There's something that binds you to him. Some kind of an outfit, maybe. A uniform. Yeah. A nurse's uniform? Yes. Nurses. Why not? I'm not a male nurse. I'm not gonna ask that. Of course, you don't have to. You can talk about anything you want. I'm also not a, f a female nurse. It's funny to, to specify I'm not a male nurse. Because it's just you, you can just say I'm not a nurse. <laughs> oh boy. But in a world where nurses are mostly female, then I suppose it, 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 that's where it comes from. The impulse to specify. You don't. You still don't need to specify. It's just it, Anyway. Um, so we're going to need to in, invest a little in that. In our esprit de corps. Or I could just do drugs no no we could we should do dr do drugs and invest in our spray spray decor so um let's do that uh okay then see you around okay first off let's see what i have here in the drugs department mm, i don't have that many do i where are they even are they tools they are tools okay so i'm gonna need psyche also get a Motorix thing, Preptide. Uh, let's, let's do the Pearl or whatever. I don't know how it's called. It's got a name. It's fine. I, and it doesn't work the first time. There you go. <sighs> doesn't that sound super gross? Yes. Yes. And then... Wait. That was only two. Does taking drugs increase my maximum learning cap permanently or temporarily? Because that's pretty powerful if... Either way. I only have that one right now. That's normal. Again? Let's do it again. 72%. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Yep. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. Yeah. From where? From another life? Yes. From another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? The 41st? Okay, okay. The man sounds genuinely excited. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives you a long, meaningful look and adds, Somewhere good. Let's talk more about that hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Oh, the hypothetical 41. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. So, what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? You seem like a cool guy. I'd love to have you as my partner. Would you now? Or would I be cramping your style? The man bites his lip and then waves his hand. Never mind, partner. Actually, I shouldn't have called you my partner. Kim's my partner. He's going to know. I'm not your partner. 
he says quickly. This this union is temporary. A little premonition for you, Lieutenant. Sooner or later, probably sooner, your new friend tells you he doesn't need you. He will then suggest you should fuck off. When that happens, I suggest you take his advice, he adds bitterly. The, the lieutenant merely bows his head in response. Do you have a crime to solve? Oh no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing your work. This isn't helping, she says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. Who else is in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but... The man pauses for dramatic effect. Police officers. Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys and... And get this, and not getting that drink on at two o'clock. Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lung. Who's the far-out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius, he winks at you sarcastically. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about them? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. The lieutenant says quietly. You are not the son of Lang. I can't imagine it anymore. Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His grey eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. Kim, who is this guy? Mm -mm. He shakes his head. I'm not getting involved in this. It's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. Hmm. <laughs> cool shades, are you wearing a disguise? Yes. It's a hobby of mine. He looks at you inquisitively. I got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop. He inspects you. You know what you look like? Like a megastar? Yes. He nods. A, a superstar cop. Of course. This again. Now will you answer some questions for me? No. He says calmly and then just keeps staring at you. Why not? Because it's not my job. Why don't you go and fucking do yours and solve this damn hanging? If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things? Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. He adopts a lighter tone. I want to hear you say things. And look at that, Jean. Do we know who he is? We know who he is, right? Hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. Okay, um, I'm doing this investigation, and it turns out he was shot and hanged. You think he was hanged as a cover-up? To hide the shooting? Basically, yes. Okay, well... He corrects his blonde wig. K.H.M. His hair. He corrects his hair. I believe KHM is our Russians they clear their throats. So that's our narrator clearing their throat. It's, it's very confusing. I don't understand. But the game has shown us that before. And I say Russians, but I, this game is, is Latvian in uh, the origin, I think. I think the writers are Latvian, right? Estonian, I think. They're... It, it, it's one of those. I'm pretty sure it's Estonian, actually. Estonian sounds sounds about right. So, yeah. Wh hey, why am I telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? He gives you an odd look. Oh my god, there's more. He looks at you in disbelief. You want something more? What is it? Yeah, let's talk about the hanged man again. Okay, why not? Let's do the old thing over again. We're not wasting time. There is no time. Okay. I'm doing this investigation. A man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? No. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, see you around. Okay, the man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. 
weird, right? I... I know. Super weird. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I should a just ask him if we're from the same station. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Probably not. Probably definitely not. Again? Look, I just have to ask, are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no, just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? Okay. Okay? Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. That's our esprit de corps ta talking to us right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, see you around. My god. My god. Obviously, I'm gonna quit someday. Wait, smoke on the balcony. What are you doing here? Hi, Jandan. Another rendezvous. There he is again. The smoker on the balcony. Right here in the whirling in rags. Hello. And I'm gonna adjust my tie. Hello, hello. So what brings you here? What is it about the way he carries himself? Could he be a member of the homosexual underground? Yes, this man is definitely one of the homos. I've seen them homos with my own eyes. This sexual thing seems interesting. Ask around, become involved. Says our electrochemistry. Are you, are you part of the homosexual underground? The homosexual underground? The smoker sits up immediately, his eyes wide with amused surprise. A honeyed smile lingers on his lips. Why, yes, I am, officer. Why? Do you want to investigate? Yes, I want to hear more about this homosexual underground you're part of. Oh, it's a pleasure group. A sabrosa pleasure group congregating in cellars under the cover of night. Saturday night. Sometimes even Friday night. Uh, s sometimes even Friday? What, uh, what about Thursday night? Or Thursday night. Sometimes the congregating doesn't even end. It carries on into our daily life. He lowers his voice conspiratorially and looks around. But why do you convene? What do you do? Oh, we're ambitious. We want to destroy the last vestiges of meaning. The last things people in Rebishol have to hold on to. The true symbols of security. The meaning of man and woman, mother and father, their marriage. Everything will be constantly shifting and moving under our rule. The future will belong to a circus of identities just spinning around, surreal and unreal. You won't even know who you are anymore. Does it have anything to do with disco? Yes, we listen to a lot of disco. Some say we engineered disco to spread our vision of a vertiginous, ever-changing society, where all there is is a razzle-dazzle of gold. We are going to change the family unit with all this razzmatazz and finger dancing. And with mysteries, of course the mysteries are also of sexual nature, very esoteric. I do like disco, maybe I should get into it. You can't just get into it, you have to be born into it. One is either already in the homosexual movement, or forever excluded from it. What if I can't remember whether I'm in or not? What if I can't remember anything about my life, aside from the fact that I like disco? Beautiful. The smoker crawls up to you like an animal preparing to jump. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. Who knows, maybe you were homosexual in the past. Maybe all of that has been repressed. He circles his hands around you. I have to say that you do look like someone who might be part of the underground. You have that very distinctive, I can't understand what's going on here, look. <laughs> that is a look. Um, okay, I'm going to blink. Okay, I have to think about it. Do think about it, officer. He starts laughing and leans back against the counter. <laughs> this is going to be like a 20-hour mind project for me. 20 hours at least. Absolutely wonderful.
absolutely wonderful. And this is the homosexual underground. You see mysterious strangers in the night, leaning against unlit doorways, engaged in hushed conversation. A shadowy cabal, exchanging looks, whispering in dark alleys and unmarked locales. A radical cell conspiring against the state, and perhaps even against men and women. Was that a secret handshake? What's going on? Who are these secretive people? How will they accomplish their sinister and world-altering goals? And most importantly, are you one of them? You could be. Maybe you forgot. And that's the part. That's the part over there. I think I had this. Uh, maybe I didn't. I don't know. I don't know that I had this thought in uh, in my previous playthrough. We're obviously doing this, and we're gonna internalize that throughout the day. It's a good time to think about our sexuality. It's always a good time to think about our sexuality, but it is not a good time to continue this episode because we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.